All right, third video in this little series is we're looking at this company's demand curve and drawing some conclusions from it, or at least some possibilities. All right? Remember, we've identified two points of data. We've constructed the demand equation, the inverse demand equation, the marginal revenue equation. We know where the marginal revenue curve is visually, right? It comes out half as far as the demand curve. Well, let's see if we can remember a couple of things other else about that marginal revenue curve. That marginal revenue curve, as you are operating in quantities along this range, the marginal revenue is positive. But when you start operating at very high volumes out here, selling a lot of product on this demand curve, marginal revenue becomes a negative number. At some point, marginal revenue becomes a zero. It goes from positive numbers into negative numbers. Can you tell me at what price and quantity does marginal revenue become zero? Okay, that's the calculation I want you to make, and look at what you've got right here. If marginal revenue is zero, zero equals 50 minus 0 .40 of whatever the quantity is there. Translating over, we get negative 50 equals negative 0.40 of QD. So QD is 50 divided by... 0.40, right? What's that going to give you? It's going to give you 125 units. So at a quantity of 125 units, if that's the quantity, by the way, what price is associated with that? Well, we're up here. 50 minus 20% of 125. What's 20% of 125? That's one-fifth. That's 25. 50 minus 25. So when the quantity, I'm sorry, when the price goes to $25, that's the point at which quantity is 125 and the marginal revenue is zero. Now, what's significant about this point on that straight line demand curve where marginal revenue becomes zero? At that point, you maximize your total revenue, not profit, revenue. You bring in as much money as you ever are going to do in terms of revenues. Not the same as profit. We're not talking about costs yet, okay? So this is kind of an important uh, point we want to remember, we want to relate to as we go along. You may also recall that when you're operating on this demand curve, the bottom half of the curve is the range of inelastic demand. Remember that? And the upper half of the curve is the elastic demand. Well, it's getting pretty messy, isn't it? What do we remember about the inelastic part of the demand curve? Is this where you want to operate? And the answer is no. If the demand for your product is inelastic down here, that means when you raise your price, you'll bring in more revenue. You remember that relationship? If not, review it. We don't want to operate in this range of the demand curve. So we want to be operating somewhere up here. And once we know our costs and plug those in here, we can tell where in that range we will maximize our profit. Not our revenue, but our profit. All right? So elasticity along the demand curve and how it is reflected in the marginal revenue curve, a very essential part of this discussion we're having. If you're not sure on it, go back to some of the YouTube videos or the textbook and review it. Okay? Because the next step, we're going to plug in some costs and say, how does the company maximize their profit? All right? That's step three, video three. Bear with me.